So hi, Michael. Nice to meet you. And, uh, Likewise. Thank you for welcoming us here in, in LA. The Welcome to California. It's beautiful. <laughs> um, you will be one of the speakers at the next conference. Yeah. Um, entitled Waiting for the Barbarians. Could you please introduce yourself to the Dutch audience? Yes, uh, well, so um, I'm the publisher of Skeptic Magazine and uh, a monthly columnist for Scientific American, and I write uh, science books, you know, related to belief, science and religion, science and pseudoscience, science and morality, science and God, uh, science and politics, science and economics, just, you know, just all different areas, but science is my thing. And, uh, you know, I'm a college professor. I teach one class in the fall at Chapman University in Orange County on Skepticism 101, How to Think. So these are freshmen, 18-year-old kids right out of high school, and I, their brains are mush, and my job is to mold them into critical thinkers. Uh, and then in the spring, I usually teach whatever my next book is going to be, so as a way to write lectures that become chapters in the book. And uh, that, that, will just, that will be my next book uh, after the moral arc, which is going to be called Heavens on Earth. And it's about the afterlife, the belief in heaven, the belief in the perfectibility of human nature, utopias and dystopias, heaven and hell, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, you will be on the, uh, the second panel debate, which is called um, How Civilized Are We? Mm -hmm. What, according to you, are the most the fundamental pillars of our civilization? Uh, well, science and reason is the, the, the epistemology that we base most of our institutions on. That is, you have to have evidence and logic and reason for what you believe and what you want to institute for you know, social change, political change, or whatever. So I'm a, uh, I think we are the children of the Enlightenment. I'm a pro-Enlightenment person, and I, I think uh, that's the, the, you know, the sort of pillars of, of how we um, build our uh, infrastructure, our, our social institutions. From there, of course, democracy, um, constitutional republics, you know, the, some sort of basis for the rule of law, and why all people should be treated equally, you know, in, in legally, morally, and so on. And then uh, economically, um, you know, free, free trade markets, you know, the way to, to, to lift people out of poverty uh, is to allow them to uh, improve their own lives economically. Um, and, uh, and then, of course, just, you know, the social institutions uh, that, that, you know, that, that hold us together, whether that's religion in some countries, like here in America, not so much in, in uh, Europe. Uh, but clearly, I use you guys as an example uh, that uh, the argument that you have to have religion to be moral, you have to have religion to have a moral society, you have to have religion to have, you know, to take care of people and so on. Europeans are doing very well and better in, on most measures than Americans without religion. Um, you know, uh, Europeans were amongst the most religious people in the world. Now they're amongst the least religious people in the world. And uh, their levels of happiness are as high as they've ever been. Um, you know, people are taken care of. You have universal health care. Uh, you know, decline. The violence has declined. You know, there's almost no wars. So you've done something right. And the idea that I have is that we should figure out what that is and do more of it. Okay. And what would you consider the biggest threats? Uh, fundamentalist religion, uh, cl clearly ISIS is the ex most extreme example, but, but just in, in general, that, um, that extremism of any kind, of course it could be Marxist ideologies or something like that, but that, that's not a big threat anymore like it was in the 70s. Now it's really Islam, you know, extreme forms of Islam. And, uh, you know, I, you have to give the disclaimer, I don't mean all Muslims. I know most Muslims are good people and so on, but we're talking about the ones that are not westernized, that don't believe in democracy, human rights, they don't think women should be treated equally and have the same rights as men, they don't, you know, and so on. I mean, that's, that's the biggest threat to civilization to come along in a long time. Uh, I'm confident they won't succeed, but it's not guaranteed. What does it take? Uh, I have to, I hate to say it, but sometimes it takes boots on the ground. It takes military okay. action. Uh, I mean, some people you can reason with. Uh, some people you cannot reason with. And, uh, you know, Al-Qaeda, the Islamic terrorists, Hamas, ISIS, and so on, the, the, you know, they want to return the world to a 7th century theocracy. This is not going to happen. And if it takes, you know, troops and hardware, if 
if it takes bombs and guns, that's what it's going to take. And I fear that is what it's going to take. Uh, I'd rather it not be. I'd rather, you know, I'm a man of books and, and, and literature and, and reason and teaching and education. If we could do it with that, that would be my preference. Okay. Unfortunately, they don't seem to be responding to that. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, we're looking forward to hearing more from you at the conference.